This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello, and welcome to The 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Fraser, and today I am joined by the totally brilliant and nice book of Let's Work Magic. Uh, this is really exciting because I... I'm painfully aware, painfully well acquainted with my inner dickhead. Um, but then I met a nice and I realized that it's not just one dickhead, it's 64 actual monsters, um, which is just really hilarious. And I just I just love everything about what what and I what you do. So today we're talking about resistance, um, uh, which anyone who's ever tried to write a book will know all about. And we are gonna be talking with Anais Bok and the Bullshit Monsters, which sounds like a super group. So welcome, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a bit who you are. Thank you so much for having me, Vicky. I love absolutely everything you put out there. And I have your book sitting next to my bed and I've already halfway read it. Although I'm supposed to be working on Bullshit Monsters, which um, means means a lot. Yes. I feel like Bullshit Monsters, the 64 Bullshit Monsters are my pips right now. They're all standing in the background. Yay, we're, we're becoming famous. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm uh, usually uh, known for the purpose diagram, these four overlapping circles that that say what you love, what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can be paid for. Um, and all of my work has centered around that. Um, uh, and it's funny because I'm a very practical person. And sometimes I get triggered by my own stuff, like purpose, because purpose is such a fluffy word. And I'm like, what the heck is it even, you know? And so therefore, the juxtaposition of this purpose work with bullshit monsters. Uh, Bullshit monsters came into being in my own journey of self-employment. So I was 23 when I became self-employed, had one real job before then. And and I remember just um, becoming self-employed. And in the first few weeks thinking, an expert is someone who has a long white beard and 30 years of experience. And then, and then I was like, wait a minute, the image I have of an expert is one that I'll never be able to, to fulfill. And I called, that was my coining of the first bullshit monster. And he's called the grand guru. I love so, it. I love yeah, it. This was eight years ago. That's so cool. I love that because, and that's such an important po- point to make as well, because we see role models and that's who we look up to. And then it's like so many role models are like old white men. And it's like, how can most of us look at that and think that's what we can become? It's bullshit. That's, I love that. That's such a great start. <laughs> yeah, and well, ever since then, I've researched bullshit monsters. It, it's, it sounds weird, but it was actually academic research, like in, uh, in my master's thesis. So kind of psychology tinged, but also with a lot of frolic. And I've um, worked with over a thousand leaders and entrepreneurs to work with their bullshit um, monsters. And um, this is how this collection of 64 monsters came to be. Awesome. So I'm going to come on to that in a second, but can you tell us a bit about your um, your research, your thesis first? Because um, I think it's, it's, I love talking to people when they've done actual academic research. And so tell us a bit about that. My my thesis was on the isolation of self-employed online workers, which um, was, yes, it was obviously self-therapy. I was stuck at home with my computer and feeling really alone, overwhelmed, um, disconnected from the whole world, like no one understood me, had a lot of trouble sitting down and actually getting chunks of work done. So I, I made that the topic of my thesis and, and uh, spoke to a lot of, lot of people who are isolated and alone and stuck. And um, so the whole thesis was, um, yeah, a good, a good beginning of that bullshit monster journey. Awesome. So how did you come up with the idea? What made you anthropomorphize them into monsters? How did you come up with that idea of the monsters? Well, what I realized was that when we identify a pattern of resistance or fear or bullshit, um, and we just assume that is part of our own personality, then what happens is that we tend to judge the judgment. So for instance, you'll say, oh, here's my perfectionism again, and I can't seem to publish this this, uh, blog post, stupid me, and then you don't do it. So creating bullshit monsters was an attempt to distance myself from that fear or piece of resistance. And in the beginning, the prototype was just a giant honey jar 
with sketches of monsters and their names and the situations in which they would come up. And that jar just began to fill up. And yeah, now, now it's all synthesized and obviously research-based and every monster is connected to a certain action you can, you can take in order to uh, move forward anyway. Okay. And so you identify, is there 64 of them? You identified 64? Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's more, but the 64 are the, the meanest ones. Okay, the cool. most common ones, yeah. <laughs> So can you introduce us to a couple of um, a couple of your bullshit monsters? Okay, so I'm going to give you, I obviously want to give you one or a few that most apply to your audience. So authors, I'll just uh, mention a few and then you can say stop if you're interested in one of them. And then I'll tell you more about that one. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to be interested in all of them. But yes, let's do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, well, in that case, I'll just rant a little bit and stop me. Um, there's Brain Fog. Brain Fog is bullshit monster number seven. And he's frequently mistaken for the couch potato. Couch potato and brain fog are completely different. Couch potato is when you know you want to work out, but you don't and you stay on the couch. Brain Fog is someone who lulls you into empty nothingness with like a lullaby of your uh, duties. So basically, you had a plan for the day but it just doesn't even let you get started. So this is the one that will not allow you to even get to the desk to write. Then there's the urgent duster. I wanted to speak about that one because I'm sure that since you renovate your cottage, you have frequently done this thing of having the plan to write and finding yourself cleaning and or renovating things instead and finding that really, really important and just kind of like coming to yourself after two hours of cleaning um you know I, I actually found myself a few days ago with a toothpick break, taking the dirt out of my windows and then I was like wait is this is this the most <laughs> the best use of my time right now okay no snap out of it um then there's a similar one because um they're basically different types of procrastinators are you laughing no I'm laughing so much I'm just going to stop you there because yeah. like, I don't know what's to call the urgent duster because it just so perfectly sums up my issue one of my biggest issues which is oh my god the windows need cleaning and they need cleaning immediately or you know what I need to completely retile the bathroom yes now stat yeah it's it's urgent (laughs) retiling needs to happen now and you believe it yeah it's not it doesn't sound as ridiculous in your head as when you look back on it or realize you're standing there tiling the bathroom you're like what am I doing (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) Have you ever met Gloria Feelgooder? Gloria Feelgooder is more of the incense type one. So she says she's all about self-care, but then you wake up and you realize you've been sitting on Meditation Mountain for two hours and you've smudged your entire house and you've picked seven fairy cards and lit all these candles perfectly. And it's just another way of procrastination. I have that one a lot as well. Yeah. Yeah. Self, self-care which is yes. you what know, I, yeah, I just need a bit of downtime. I'm just, I, I can play this computer game for half an hour. That's fine. Yes. A bit of yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a, a meaner one that isn't a procrastinator. So this one um, speaks to you about your past failures and I call him the ration ass. Um, and the, the ration ass uses a distorted logic to make a case for why you're going to fail this time as well. So you may as well not never get started. And I love him because he's got these, this peachy, hairy little bum. <laughs> and then there's Stern Blade. I love Stern Blade as well. He's a, a little blade of grass, but he's like a little military man. And he just makes sure that the lawn is evenly cut. And so what he wants you to do is not stand out. Um, because that's dangerous. So don't voice your opinion. Don't say anything that could be taken the wrong way. Um, and what happens to your writing is that it becomes dull. Yes. Um, if you listen to this one. Yeah. So if you notice that you're editing as you write, like rather than writing and then putting it away and editing um, later, you may be, oh, no, this is a little bit out there. Let's remove this part. Yeah. Then you've met Sternblade. Oh, Sternblade, I think. I think Sternblade is going to become my favorite. That's the one that I have fought against so much because I am so terrified of upsetting anyone or anyone yelling at me for having an opinion. And it's just ridiculous. It's like, and you know, I say to other people, it's ridiculous. I love, I love Sternblade. I'm going to, when he arrives, I'm going to stick him on my wall next to my face. (laughs) 
Awesome. Cool. Oh, and another favorite for me that's been a showing up with Bullshit Monsters. With like, I'm writing Bullshit Monsters, the book. I'm up to about 20,000 words now. And, um, and the one that's been coming up are the taunting thimbles. And it, they just come up and still affect me, although I'm writing about them. And they're this little monster collective. And they're these tiny little monsters that go and sit in your ear and laugh at you. And the funny thing is that they're good at imitating voices from the past. So maybe your crush in high school or a teacher who used to taunt you. And they'll just sit in your ear and be like, everyone's going to laugh about you. You know, um, here goes the leadership trainer with a master of science publishing something called bullshit monsters, <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, that one, those have been affecting me. But the good thing is it's like Rumpelstiltskin where when you know that bullshit monsters are around, you just scan yourself differently. Yeah. And so I know that they're all showing up mostly because they're excited to, to now become famous um, and because I'm trying to create something. Yeah. I am so, I am literally so excited about your bullshit monsters. I just, I'm so excited about them because there is, it's like, and it, like you just said, your, your taunting thimbles, which by the way is hilarious. Everything just makes me laugh about it. Um, but you've got this academic background and you are making it accessible to people in the best possible way, which is fantastic because we don't connect with academic writing. We don't. It's difficult mm -hmm. to connect with. Um, mm -hmm. And so the fact that you are doing this is just amazing. I'm, I'm just going to do everything I can to make sure that as many people as possible get bullshit monsters because it's just it's just thank awesome. you okay so thank you for inter I would I would quite happily sit here and listen to you go through the entire deck of bullshit monsters <laughs> but you know let's 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 go on to how you hope people will use them so why a deck of cards what are you hoping people will do with them um I think resistance is quite a tough subject right when you notice that you have resistance in you there's that judgment we spoke about earlier um but there's also you you connected to your livelihood if I don't get this done then I don't know how to pay my rent next next year or next month. Um, and so you're usually in a state of perpetual worry or anxiety, or you're simply stiff. And so the best, um, the best way to counter that in my eyes is through humor. So I definitely didn't want to create a serious tool that would make it sound like an illness, like imposter syndrome. These days, everyone thinks every type of bullshit they have is imposter syndrome, and it's not. And usually when you listen to how they speak about it, it's like, I have imposter syndrome. I cannot possibly do anything. And that's where it stops. And so I wanted to create something that would make people laugh because when you can laugh about yourself, you can easily um, move forward. And I wanted it to be something very easy that would give you the impression that A, we all have bullshit, first of all. B, we all have lots of bullshit. It's not just one type of like, what's your biggest weakness? Oh, I'm a perfectionist. You know, like the talk we have during, uh, during interviews, we all have lots of bullshit and I might have this type of bullshit today and the next one tomorrow. So for me, cards, um, have always been a very intuitive and fun tool where if I'm stuck, I just pick a card randomly and read about it. And if it doesn't apply to my right now, then it'll apply to another one and it'll get me thinking. Um, but very, very often the cards we pick are actually spot on and it just works. So perhaps Bullshit Monsters is for people who um, like fairy cards or like tarot or who at least aren't opposed to the, um, to the technique. Cool. I, I, yeah, I just love it. Okay, so what... How have you helped people with this method? How, how, are you, how do you use this method in what you do um, with your business? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a, I'm a leadership trainer. I usually get hired to work with um, top teams from Fortune 500 companies or really high profile startups. And uh, what I get asked to do is to come in and facilitate team effectiveness, right? And the problem with team effectiveness is it's not just about roles and boundaries and uh, communication channels, but oftentimes it's the interpersonal stuff that we don't talk about. So we have this professional self, this mask that's firmly put, and then behind it, we're thinking, ah, oh, here we go again in this stupid team workshop, or gosh, I wish I had time to work on the thing that I'm doing. And so I use bullshit monsters to cut through the bullshit, through the crap, and speak about what's really happening. And so it's kind of a paradox intervention where you say something that people aren't used to, to get them out of their lulls. So when I say, hey, I'd like your permission to call you on your bullshit in a leadership 
uh, workshop with men in suits, they're usually startled. And sometimes for a second, I can see their thinking like, should we kick her out now? Like now it's not too late <laughs> to tell her to please leave. And usually they stick with it and they all end up loving it. So um, in leadership contexts, what I do is there's 15 people in front of me. Okay, let's pick 15 cards, talk about their effect and see who's affected by which one in this group. Um, and Bullshit Monsters is made for team context as well. So each monster description also comes with a description of what happens when this monster shows up in a team. So that's how I use it as a trainer. And for myself, I just use it when I'm stuck. Don't know what to write today? Bullshit monster. And cleaning my windows with a toothpick? Bullshit monster. So I just, I simply pick a card. My friend keeps chewing my ear off with her problems and won't listen to reason. Hey, do you want me to pick a bullshit monster card for you? So that's, that's how I use them. Awesome. I'm, I'm just like now, while you're talking, I'm thinking of all of the different ways that I can use the bullshit monster deck of cards with my own clients and I'm just like oh this is going to be such a cool thing because I yeah because yeah, you're right we talk there's a lot of there's a lot of you know mouth flapping about imposter syndrome and resistance and all the rest of it and not an awful lot done about it and mm-hmm. so I really love the idea of something that can help us actually you know, work on our bullshit so how do you how do you help people work on the specific bullshit mm-hmm. that comes so one of the one of the things that is important to know is that not every type of bullshit monster needs to be uh, dealt with the same way. We usually see resistance as something you just have to pull through, right? Especially in the writing community, it's just when we're waiting for the muse to hit us, we say no, sit down and simply write. That's one way to do it. So a few of them are kind of like push through, um, but others will require you to be gentle with yourself, to say an absolute truth. Um, to, for instance, brain fog, the one we spoke about in the beginning, can be brought out through focus, right? Focus on one thing today, one, not five, one. And oftentimes people are so far out, they can't even come up with one priority. And what I always tell them is, okay, if you can't come up with one priority for today, use anger as an anchor. So think of one thing that royally pisses you off, And then try and turn that around. So I think the one I mentioned in the book is, I hated when people use lingo just to make themselves sound more academic and well-versed. And then you turn that around and say, hey, I believe communication is here to build connection between people and, and authentically be on the same page. And suddenly you have this one thing that you believe in and you can build your focus around that thing today and say, what can you create today? based around that thing you care about. So this is just one example, and they each come with a different type of intervention. So there, it's listed in the book, basically, underneath each bullshit monster. Okay, awesome. And speaking of the book, you said that, so you've got this deck of cards, and this is, this is a thing, and now, now you're writing the book. So tell us about the process of writing the book. It's mortifying to me, <laughs> because I know these bullshit monsters intimately. I've I've worked with them. Um, and so a lot of it is in my head or is in snippets everywhere, or I've done podcasts or interviews about them. Um, so the information is spread. And usually it's about anywhere between three and 10 pages about each monster. And so I've had to go through and not just select which monsters will make it in, but also distill this information down into one double page per monster. And the book is supposed to be small because I want I want the book and the cards to be the same size, kind of like a pocket size. So it's going to be 152 pages of small with a double page per monster. So for me, the process of distilling it down and deciding how to bring them to life and concisely and shortly explain the effect and then give us, because I have five, six tricks per monster, what's the one thing people can do regardless of whether they're an entrepreneur or a leader that will help them push through that is practical, applicable, and easy to do that will have an effect. So it's been, the hard thing has been the selection process. Once I decide what goes in, it's a delight to just write it down. Awesome. So how have you been deciding? What process of elimination have you used? Imagination. So I actually visualize either a past client, or if I can't come up with a past client, a friend who I know has this this particular um, bullshit monster. Because it's really important, I know you mentioned this in, in your book, How the Hell to Write a Book, um, that you you need to base this on real research, your real weirdos. And so that's precisely what I do. Um, 
Uh, so I think about what would help my friend Peter in this situation right now? What is the most um, practical, like the smallest thing with the biggest impact? And, and that's the only way for me to do it. Otherwise, they don't come to life. I love that. That's a really valuable nugget for anybody who's listening, because one of the big problems that I know a lot of people have when they're writing a book, me included, is what to include and what to leave out. And I love the idea of distilling it down into, yeah, what's the what's the smallest thing that has the biggest impact? And that's where you start from. I think yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, OK, we're running running out of time. I could just talk to you all day. I don't, you, you're going to come back again at some point and we're going to talk more about this because there's so many things to talk about. Um, <laughs> but where can we find out more about this and where can we get our hands on a pack of on a pack of bullshit monster cards? Um, at bullshitmonsters.com. And um, if you go on there soon, uh, you'll be part of the crowdfunding project. So we are crowdfunding this very, very first um, batch of Bullshit Monster cards. So I'm excited for anyone who joins it. Shipping is international. So wherever you are in the world, uh, we will make it happen despite Corona. And um, uh, yes, that's how to get your deck on the cards. If you want to find more about more about me, go to letsworkmagic.com. That's where my my stuff and my writing is. Amazing. So I have already got my Bullshit Monsters on order. I am very excited, waiting very impatiently. So um, everybody who is listening to this needs to go and help the crowdfunding because I want my Bullshit Monsters. <laughs> so you need to go and make that happen. Um, that's very exciting. I love the fact that you're... Actually, let's talk a little bit about crowd... What, what made you decide to crowdfund it? Tell us about that because I don't... I have not really had much to do with crowdfunding before other than knowing that it's a thing. So... Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's not really crowdfunding in the in the typical way because I haven't decided to go for a platform like Kickstarter um, because they're just all drowning in Corona stuff and I realized that um, the upside wouldn't be big enough so I self hosted and simply followed the structure that a typical crowdfunding campaign would have. This is basically me giving myself permission um, to not have it be perfect from the beginning because when people know it's crowdfunded it means this is edition number one I can say hey I'm working my bum off to make this happen will you help me so it's 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 just been a, a really good tool in order to counter my own perfectionism and reach out you know also to friends and colleagues who aren't typically my clients and say hey can you help it's a crowdfunding campaign whereas if I had simply put it out there as a product and said would you like to check out my new product um, that that's a different level at which I'm doing this. So I'm coming at it from a really human angle. I love that. I think, and I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of lessons there for authors as well, because there's no reason whatsoever why somebody who wants to write a book couldn't get their book crowdfunded. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. That's such a good idea. And we are going to talk more about that at some point as well. Just so many things. So I have just like asked you to finish on the, on the, where can we find out more? And then I totally derailed into talking about crowdfunding. So um, bullshitmonsters.com and letsworkmagic.com. Yes. Thank you so much, Vicky. And I always ask my guests to leave um, one takeaway for people. So if you could, if you could just leave people with one thing to think about from this podcast interview, what would it be? Um, I think it's the really simple, we all have bullshit and it's don't try to get rid of it because oftentimes we think, oh, I'll, I'll try and get rid of it. And after it's gone, I will go out and write my book. And rather it's, you know, learn to dance with it, have fun identifying these pieces of resistance, because ultimately they're simply a sign that you're doing something creative. I love that. Thank you. And um, there's nothing more fun for me than just learning more about how I work. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And I thank you so much. This has been an absolute pleasure. I've really enjoyed this. Um, really exciting. Go to bullshitmonsters.com and order your order your deck of bullshit monster cards because it's going to be so exciting. Um, and if you next week, Joe will be back and we will be back uh, talking about writing books. I don't know what yet. Um, if you've listened to every episode, email me with your postal address and I will send you a special silly gift. If you've liked this podcast, go to iTunes and subscribe or subscribe wherever you subscribe. Leave us a review, leave us five stars or however many stars you think it deserves. If you don't think it deserves five stars, other podcasts are available. And we will be back same time next week. So thank you. Thank you, Anais. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And we will see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. 
We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. 